Hi there, welcome to our exam AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 62 entitled Azure Region Pairs. My name is Tim Warner. In the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 objective domain, today's skill starts in the functional group Describe Core Azure Services, works its way through the objective Describe the Core Azure Architectural Components, and terminates with Describe the Benefits and Usage of Regions and Region Pairs. As you see on the right side of the slide, point your browser to timw.info slash az900sg to get to my interactive az900 table of contents that has links to all of the videos. I'm quite sure that we discussed Azure regions in an earlier installment of this study guide. Recall that regions are areas of the world. As you can see on the right-hand side of the slide, there's a Microsoft provided diagram, and I give the attribution in the lower left of this slide that the globe is divided into geographies, in which case you've got these regions. These are points of presence for the Microsoft Azure Cloud. And what Microsoft has done is throughout its geographies created pairs of these regions. These are two regions within the same geography that are far enough apart to be separate regions, but close enough to where they're in the same geography. And this is the main point. Microsoft has put down additional network interconnects between paired regions to decrease latency, to minimize latency, in other words, delay. What does this mean for your Azure infrastructure? Well, for example, if you had Azure SQL database deployed to the East US, and for fault tolerance and high availability, you wanted to replicate that database to another region, I always recommend that look at the region pair first because of those network interconnects so that you'll get minimal latency before just deciding by some other metric, oh, well, I want my secondary in this other region. That may very well be the case. You're not limited to using region pairs in most cases. However, in the demo, I am going to show you an exception to that. With Azure storage accounts, there you do not get a choice. If you replicate your storage account across regions, Azure will use the other pair in the region pair for that region. Azure updates one region per pair at a time during planned maintenance. So this ensures that you've got high availability. If you, for instance, have deployed two replica virtual machines, each to different regions in the same region pair, and Microsoft has some planned maintenance that will affect an entire region, you know that your service should be okay because while that planned maintenance is happening in your primary region, you still have the other region pair region online and available. Okay, in this demo, let's work a bit with Azure region pairs. I'm going to give you the URLs to these pages I'm showing you so you don't necessarily have to squint to try to figure out what I've got going on in the browser address bar. This is one of the Microsoft Azure public web pages. It's called Azure Geographies. And what you see, of course, is a map of the world that has all the points of presence, not only within the Azure public cloud, but the government or sovereign clouds as well. And I know we discussed that in an earlier lesson in this series. If I scroll down a bit further, notice that you can open up the interactive dropdown to choose a geography, and then you can look at the metadata for each region. Now, this isn't helpful from a region pair perspective. I'm giving you this reference just if you want to dive more deeply into regions. In fact, if you look at the availability zones presence row, that would be particularly important to me as an Azure Solutions Architect, because as a general practice, I recommend using regions that do have availability zones because they offer more layers of high availability than regions that don't. This is the Microsoft Docs article that I always point to when we're looking for Azure paired region info. It's called Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery, Azure Paired Regions. I've already given you an explanation of what the paired regions are. What I like about this is that we have, as you can see here, by geography to geography, the different regional pairings. So how this translates into your real-life work with Azure, I'm going to do a Control-F and type East US, which is mainly the region that I use. Let me come down to where it is. It looks like we've got East US and East US 2 regions in the North America geography. So as I was saying earlier, if I'm going to deploy a database or some other resource where I'm going to redundantly deploy it to another region for high availability, I want to maximize the performance between those two database instances. So in this case, it looks like the paired region for East US is West US, 
and the paired region for East US 2 is Central US. Again, you're not forced to use the region pairs in most cases. An exception to that rule is the storage account. If we create a storage account in our subscription, let me quickly just nominate a resource group. We're going to choose the location here based on whether you're in a government cloud or the public cloud. I'm in the public cloud and there's my East US region. But depending upon what your replication option is here, there's a type of storage account replication called geo redundant storage or GRS. And when you choose one of the GRS replication options, what Microsoft does in the background is it creates three copies of your storage account and keeps those in your home region, which in my case is going to be East US. We now know because we were looking over at the region pair list that if we choose one of the geo redundant options that the second three copies of that storage account are going to be in West US. You do not get a choice there. And that's really as it should be when you're thinking about a storage account and you've got need to do, for instance, a failover or just to maintain synchronization between your storage account and two different regions. Those extra network interconnects that Microsoft puts between the region pairs is a really good thing. Last thing I want to show you is Azure Speed Test 2.0. Now, this is an open source project. If you come down to the bottom of the page, you can read about the author and you can actually go to GitHub and fork the project yourself. I really like this because what the application is doing, as it says on the title, it's measuring the latency from your web browser to the blob storage service in each of the Azure public data center locations. And as you can see, I'm definitely choosing the correct region with East US because that's giving me the smallest amount of latency. And just for grins, let's come down and find where West US is. Looks like we've got 83, 84 milliseconds of latency there and only 19 in East US. Well, that's not doing a good job as far as demonstrating those extra network interconnects. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought you might be interested in this site because I go over this with my customers to make sure that they're choosing the most efficient regions for their resources. For further learning, you can look at the public page I showed you on Azure Regions and Geographies by going to timw.info slash APR1. The Microsoft Docs on Azure Region Pairs, timw.info slash APR2. And if you want to check out that Azure Speed Test web application I showed you, go to timw.info slash APR3. Well, that's it. Another lesson down. Good deal. In the next episode, we'll cover Windows Virtual Desktop. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at TechTrainerTim. All of my Pluralsight courses are at timw.info ps, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again, and happy studying.